Often when we're building up a printed circuit board we need to attach some external devices to the printed circuit board. So here I have a circuit board and I'd like to attach some of these external components to that circuit board. So here I have some different types of toggle switches which have two different types of lugs. We have like a traditional round lug and then here's just a straight connection. Here's a fuse holder, push button switch, a microphone, and of course we have two different types of potentiometers. I'll show you simple ways that I use to attach wires to these devices. Before you start, you're going to need some wire strippers. Here are several different models of wire strippers. Here are two manual type wire strippers. You have to set the opening in the jaw right here to the wire gauge that you're going to be stripping and to do that you would have to adjust this little screw and do a couple sample runs with the wire that you're stripping. This works pretty good. Here's another one, same idea. You just close the jaw and once you have the jaw opening set it'll strip that gauge of wire endlessly. And it's easy to do, a lot easier than the other one because it's a nice little screw fitting. Here's another type of manual wire stripper and crimping tool. I can actually strip anywhere from 20 gauge all the way up to 8 gauge wires with this wire stripper. It also allows me to do a little wee bit of crimping and I can repair a few threads and do some bolt cutting. This is a cheap pair of wire strippers, automatic wire strippers, that I picked up from the dollar store. These work quite well, just that I've had them actually work for quite a while and then all of a sudden they just sort of blow apart in your hand. So I guess you get what you pay for. Now this tool doubles up as a side cutter and an automatic wire stripper. I'm not particularly fond of them because often the wire stripping uh, doesn't work on all wires. So again, you get what you pay for. This is another type of automatic wire stripper and crimper and cutter. Uh, it works quite well and, it, and I've had no problems with it, but it costs a little wee bit more money. So you can often get these for around $20, $25 for a regular price and if you watch you can often find these for about $10, $12 on sale. So I've shown you several different type of wire strippers. Any one of them will do the job. You just have to be careful. Now of course you're going to find the odd person and say, ah, oh, who needs a wire stripper? I'll just use my side cutters and just try to strip the wire this way, like this. And yeah, that might work, but the problem is, is that you're going to fatigue the wire and you're going to lose a number of wire strands, so you're not getting full use of the stranded wire. If you're using solid wire, you're probably damaging the wire and at the point where you try to strip you've already uh, fatigued the metal or the wire and it'll break very easily off the circuit board so you don't want to be doing this with your side cutters forget that one here I'll show you how the dollar store wire stripper works so they actually have a little wee bit of a gauge here telling you how much wire you're stripping you just put it into say three quarters of an inch and there you go you have your wire stripped if you're going to use the more expensive wire strippers, they work quite nicely. And I don't mind these at all. Let's just see how these little critters work. Not too bad today. So that's not bad for this one. Okay, now you're probably wondering, well, what should I use? Solid wire or stranded wire? For connecting my devices to my printed circuit board. I always recommend to my students using stranded wire and never to use solid wire. The reason I suggest using stranded wire is that it's a lot more flexible and will move around a little bit more easily and 
not break as easily off the printed circuit board. So this is why I always use stranded wire. To start off with, I always take the stranded wire and I twist the wire strands together. Now you can twist either clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't much matter. All I want to do is get the wire strands nice and tight together. To simplify my life, I'm going to use these helping hands and I'm going to hold the potentiometer in one of the alligator clips. Before I insert the stranded wire into the eyelet lug, I make sure I twist all of the wire strands together very tightly. Insert the wire so that the insulation just touches the eyelet lug and then fold the wire over to form a bit of a hook like this. To make sure that the wire does not move while I'm soldering, I'm going to use the other alligator clip in my helping hand and clip the wire into it. Now everything is nice and secure and I'm ready to solder. Okay, now I'm ready to solder, so I'm going to take my soldering iron, wipe it clean in the damp sponge. I have it set to 650 degrees. I'm using 6040 solder. Now what I'll do is I'm going to use the flat part of my chisel tip on the soldering iron and I'm going to put it underneath the lug and just touch the wire. So I'm going to wait a minute and then I'm going to bring the solder in till I fill the eyelet. So now we've got the wire soldered completely to the eyelet lug. Let's clean the soldering iron back off into the wet sponge, put it back in the holder so nothing gets burned, and let's just snip off the excess wire that's not needed anymore. So I'm not going far into the solder mound. So let's take a look at what I just did. So you can see here the insulation isn't burned, it's up close to the solder lug. I filled up the entire eyelet full with solder. And that should last for quite a long time. So now let's solder a wire onto this spade terminal. Remember, we should twist our wire doesn't matter which way, twist it counterclockwise or clockwise, it won't matter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab onto the end of the wire with my needle nose pliers and wrap around the spade connector once. Just like so. We can just straighten that wire up. Let me just make it look a little neater. And there, there we have it. Now this is ready to solder onto the spade connector. So I've only wrapped it around just one time. You can see how it's done. You don't need to keep on wrapping it like you're trying to rope a steer at a rodeo competition. Not necessary. So now I'm ready to solder. I'll take my soldering iron out of the stand, wipe it clean. And this one might just take a little bit, I don't know. There's just a touch more mass there. So I'm going to put the soldering iron underneath the spade connector and touch the wire. I'm going to leave it there for a little while to make sure everything gets heated up well. And then I'll bring the solder in. Oh, it's starting to flow. And you can see how the solder wicked right into the wire. I'll wipe my iron clean and put it back into the soldering iron stand. 
Now let's just take a little closer look at this. So let's just rotate this a little wee bit and you can see how the solder wicked into the wire. It did flow a little wee bit down onto the far end of the spade connector. The insulation didn't melt back a lot. Notice the insulation is right up against the spade connector which is a good thing. So now I'm just going to cut that little excess of wire off and this is now soldered to the I'm just going to use my side cutter and snip off the excess wire. There we go. So now this is completely soldered to the spade connector on the potentiometer. Now let's solder the wires into the printed circuit board. Again, I'm always going to use a stranded wire because it's a lot more flexible and it will allow for a little more bending and movement within a chassis or whatever you're building. So we'll always insert the wire on the component side of the printed circuit board. Now I've inserted the wire into the printed circuit board but as soon as I flip this board around the wires will fall out. So this is where I'm going to use a little wee bit of masking tape or scotch tape to hold the wires in place while I'm soldering so that they won't fall out and move on me. So we're going to insert the wire as far as the, the insulation will allow us. So the insulation will go right up against the pad and if we do this right we shouldn't get a lot of shrink back on the insulation when we solder. Now this is how I tape the wires to the board. What I did is I left a little wee bit of a loop to create the pressure so that the wire will stay into the board while I flip it over and put it into my printed circuit board stand. There you go, you can see that. So now let's mount this in my printed circuit board stand and solder the wires. Okay, so I have the printed circuit board securely attached to my printed circuit board holder or helping hands. The wires are taped at the, on the component side so I'm ready to solder. So I'm going to wipe my iron clean. I'm set to 650 degrees and I'm also using 6040 solder. So I'll wait for a minute I've got the soldering iron touching the pad and the component lead and there we go we've got it let's do this one wait a second to heat everything up and then bring the solder in and we've got that one too let's take a closer look at it so we'll wipe my iron clean put it into the soldering iron stand and have a closer look at this. So here's the completed solder joint. It looks like a small volcano. You can see that the flux did burn a little wee bit on the circuit board. It still doesn't look too bad. Let's see how it looks on the component side. You can see there isn't a lot of shrink back on the insulation. So now all I need to do is snip the excess wire off the circuit board. Just like that. And now let's wash the board clean with our isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so I'm using my toothbrush and isopropyl alcohol to clean the flux off the board. Again, you can use liberal amounts of of this. The more you use, the cleaner it'll get. And of course, if you have an air compressor, you can blow it all dry afterwards. So this is the completed solder joint. I've washed the board off with the isopropyl alcohol. Let's take a look at the other side. Here's the other side. Let's just quickly remove the tape from the circuit board. Like that. And 
there we go we soldered a couple of wires onto the printed circuit board without damaging the insulation on the wire you can see there isn't a lot of shrink back which is good so this is how you would solder wires onto a printed circuit board